for tapes, CDs, DVDs, to our publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, write P.O. Box 21516, Hot Springs, Arkansas, Zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Sunday evening, September the 5th, 1999. Labor Day weekend teaching and deliverance camp meeting being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Campgrounds, Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. Tommy Cook of Tulsa, Oklahoma is the speaker of the evening. Chapter 22 of Proverbs. And I want to go to verse 20. Let's read it together. Can we read verse 20 together? Have not I written to thee excellent things in counsels and knowledge? Read the next one now. That I might make thee know the certainty of the words of truth, that thou mightest answer the words of truth to them that send unto thee. Praise God. The word excellent things in verse 20 means threefold. How many know the Lord speaks in threes? Do you know that? He really does. How many know that there's the outer court? There's the holy place. Thank you, Brother Spencer. There's the uh, most holy place. Isn't that right? Yes. <clears throat> Praise God. Thirtyfold. Come on, help me. Again. Sixtyfold. Hundredfold. Spirit. Soul. Body. Then there's fruit. More fruit. Much fruit. Then there's visitation in the outer court. Manifestation in the holy place. Habitation in the Holy of Holies. Then there is the blade. This is Mark chapter 4. The blade, the ear, and the full ear. How many wants to become a full ear? Amen. Amen. Then there is Passover. Come on, help me. Pentecost. Tabernacles. Then there's children. This is 1 John 2. Children, young men, and fathers. Then we have Jesus as a babe. Jesus at 12, and Jesus the Son of the living God. Amen? 30 years of age when he began his ministry. In the outer court, we're forgiven. In the holy place, we're filled. But how many know God wants us to come to the fullness? Hallelujah. Can you say amen? I believe that, don't you? We have the believer, we have the bride, and we have, come on, the man-child. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We have the cub, this is Genesis 49, the cub, the lion, and the old lion. <laughs> Hallelujah. We know there's the natural realm, there's the spiritual realm, and there's a fullness to the things of God. Praise God. There was natural light in the tabernacle, artificial light, and then there was the Sh Sh Shekinah glory. How many know we need that tonight? Praise God. Baptism in the sea, baptism in the cloud, baptism in Jordan. Natural rest, spiritual rest, the fullness of rest. One thousand year reign with Jesus Christ. And then there are those who are forgiven, there are those who are fortified, and there are those who walk in fatherhood. Oh, it's a message and all that. Hallelujah. Let's go now to book, the book of Revelation. Can we go there? Praise God. That's not a hard book to find, is it? Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Lord's doing something, isn't he? Hallelujah. You know, in the book of Revelation, um, we know there were seven um, seals. Daniel was told to seal up the book, wasn't he? To the time of the end. How many, know, how many believe we're in the end? And there are were, there were seven uh, seals or seven mysteries of God. Then there are seven trumpets, seven messages, God's sounding. And then, of course, there are seven vials, uh, bowl judgments, plagues uh, that, that are coming upon the earth. If we reject the mysteries of God and the trumpets of God, how many know that we'll be judged? And how many know God wants us to open up to the seals of God, to the trumpet of God, and we'll be protected when the judgments come? Isn't that right? Praise God. How many know that vows are coming on the wicked? Come on, the wrath of God is coming on the wicked. Isn't that right? Now, let's look in Revelation just a minute. Turn with me to chapter 8. And I want to show you just three scriptures here real quick. Following these um, 
seals, trumpets, and vials. There's something going to happen. Now, I'm not going to go into the details of it yet. But look in chapter 8, verse 5. And it says here, uh, if you'll notice in verse 1, actually, of chapter 8, when he opened the seventh seal. So the, after the seventh seal, down in verse 5, the angel took the censer and filled it with the fire of the altar and cast it to the earth. And there was voices, thunderings, lightnings, and earthquake. All right, now let's go over to Revelation 11. Let's see what happens after the trumpets. Revelation 11, 15. Revelation 11, 15. And the seventh angel sounded. How many know we're going to be changed at the last trumpet? We're being changed. Every, every one of them are being changed, but the last trumpet will bring, bring the final change. The seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of His Christ. Now, that's the body of Christ, isn't it? And He shall reign for how long? How long is Jesus going to reign? Come on. Forever. And ever. And how many know that means that we're going to reign with him forever and ever too? Now look down to verse 19. What happens after that seventh trumpet? And the temple of God was open in heaven. There was seen in the temple and the ark of his testament. There was lightnings and voices and thunderings and earth earthquake. Then he adds hail here. I mean, everybody's going to get woke up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now let's go over to Revelation chapter 16. Revelation 16, verse 17. Praise God. And this is uh, following the, uh, the vials. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air. I mean, no, that's right here where we are. <laughs> We're going to be caught up in the air. I mean, no, that's right here. Praise God. Another scripture said they threw dust in the air, not the sky. Amen. The seventh angel poured the vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is. Done. Next verse. And there was voices and thunderings and lightnings and a great earthquake and so forth. Praise God. So after each trumpet and each vial and each uh, seal, we saw thunder and lightning and earthquakes and so forth. In some scriptures in Revelation, the thunder comes first and some the lightning comes first. Okay? And so we know that is happening. Now, how many believe that John was told something? To come up higher. Come up hither. Let's look at that in chapter 4. How many believe that we need to get up higher? We're on, we're on low ground too much of the time. Somebody help me say amen. amen. And John was on low ground, whether you know it or not. But God took him up, didn't he? Hallelujah. In the Spirit. And here in chapter 4, verse 1, After this I looked, and behold, a door was open in heaven. And the first voice that I heard was, as it were, the trumpet talking with me. How many has ever had a trumpet talk with you? How many know that's a message? It's a message. It's a warning. There's a lot of things with a trumpet. Which said, come up hither, and I'm going to show you things that must be what? Hereafter. So his mind, his soul, uh, his whole being was in a low area of understanding. And God had to lift him up out of himself. In the Spirit, to hear and see what God wanted him to hear and see. How many know that we need to come up out of this carnal realm in the Spirit with God? Amen. We need God's help to take us up higher. Isn't that right? As we cry out for Him. Praise the Lord. Anybody want to go higher tonight? Amen. Amen. I believe you do. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> I certainly do. Now, look in chapter 15 of Revelation. I'm just, I don't have three points tonight. I'm sorry. I don't have sermonettes for Christianettes. I have a message. God put a message in me. Praise the Lord. There's a difference. Amen? And so, I'm not against sermons if people want to preach them, but I, I don't preach sermons. In Revelation chapter 15 and verse 1, look at this verse now. And I saw another sign, another sign. Well, we saw another sign. He'd already seen a sign, hadn't he? In heaven, in heaven, great and marvelous. He said this sign was great and marvelous. How many know if you start moving in the Spirit, you're going to see some things great and marvelous? Seven angels. What's seven a number of? Come on, help me now. Spirits of perfection. Seven angels. Seven messengers. Having the seven last plagues, or those bold ju judgments, or vials. For in them, in those bold judgments, is filled up. Everybody say, filled up. <laughs> well, how many know it's filled up? You can't get it any fuller. Come on now. It's filled up what? The wrath of God. Amen? 
And so now look down to verse 6. And the seven angels came out of the temple, <clears throat> having the seven plagues. And here, notice, clothed in pure and white linen. How many know that's the overcomer's clothing? And it says something here. Having their breasts girded with gold, golden girdles, <clears throat> and one of the four beasts, and there's a message right here, but I'm not going to get into it. <laughs> One of the four beasts gave unto the seven angels seven golden vials. Here it is, full. We saw that in verse 1. Full of what? The wrath of God, who liveth, here it is again, forever and ever. Hallelujah. Let me see that. All right, now go to chapter 17 of Revelation and verse 1. Now look at this. How many angels did we see, though, in chapter 15? <clears throat> seven. Now look in chapter 17, 1. And there came one, one-seventh. There came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, John said. How many believe there's going to be some visitation in this end times? There's going to be some angelic visitations. Come on, amen. Which said, notice what he talked with John, which said, come Hither. Now, earlier he said something else. What did he say in chapter 4? Come. Come up hither. Now he says, come hither. Come closer. How many believe we need to get a little closer? And I will show you, John, the judgment of the great whore. Not many preaching against the whore. How many know there's a religious system that's a whore? Come on, help me now. That sitteth. Upon many waters. Now look in verse 15. We see what the waters are. In verse 15, he said to me, The waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth, or the harlot sitteth, are peoples, multitudes, come on, nations and tongues. One man has said recently, I just read his, his, uh, what he said. He said that more people has been killed, possibly, by the Queen of Heaven than any other spirit. How many of the queen of heaven is destructive? It is the depths of Satan. And how many know Satan hates God's people? Yes. Amen. But he said here, this one angel came <clears throat> closer and he showed him something. What did he show him? He showed him the judgment of this whore. Now go to Revelation 21. Revelation. And look in chapter 21. <clears throat> Down to verse 9. I'm going to slow down a little tonight. Is that all right? The other night I went like a house of fire other morning. And there came, verse 9, there came unto me one of the seven angels. So here it is again, one of the seven, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, What did he say again to him? Come closer. <laughs> Repeat session. But notice, I will show thee, not this time the harlot, I'll show you another woman. The bride. Come on. The lamb's wife. How many know he's got a wife? Hallelujah. How many want to be part of the, of the wife? <laughs> Amen. And notice this wife had something. Oh, excuse me, verse 10. And he carried me away in the Spirit to a great and high mountain. And he showed me that great city. How many know that great city is the bride of Christ? Yes. Amen? The holy Jerusalem, which is coming down, not just zipping up. I mean, everybody today is talking about rapture and going up. I mean, this city is coming down. Isn't it? Yes. Amen. Now, he said something here. The holy Jerusalem descending out of heaven from God. And notice this city, having the glory of God. Having the glory of God. How many want the glory of God? <clears throat> and notice he said something else here. <clears throat> and her light was like a, unto a stone most precious. How many know that stone is Jesus? You believe that? He is the most high, isn't he? He's most holy. And I want to tell you, Jesus is most precious. Even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. So this city... This Jerusalem, New Jerusalem, had the glory of God. The light was like unto that stone, which means she'd come forth in the very image of Jesus. Come on. Clear as crystal, which means there's no darkness. There's no mixture. 
There's no more demons. Transparency. See right through one another. Just as God can see through us, He's bringing us to a place we can see right through one another with pure eyes, His eyes. Anybody want that? I mean, there's a lot of fault finding in the body. We need to see the good as well. Amen? Praise God. All right, now, <clears throat> so we see, John, John is, I, I see two things here. God is going to judge one woman, the harlot, amen? And at the same time, he's raising up, come on, this beautiful, beautiful bride. Do you believe that? Praise God. Now, <clears throat> let's go to another scripture. Go to Revelation 21 here, and now look at verse 11. I want to look at it again. Having what now? The glory of God. Jesus prayed that would have the glory in John 17, didn't he? And her light was like unto that stone most precious, even like a jasper stone clear as crystal. Now, who was showing John this, this bride? Who was it? That angel. One of the seven, right? Is that true? Okay. Now, look in verse 12. And he said here, in this verse, he talks about the, the city uh, there in verse 12. That had, she, the city had a wall and so forth. But come down to verse 17. That's where I want you to go. And notice, and he, the angel, measured the wall thereof. And it was 144 cubits, okay? And then, if you'll come on down with me in this chapter, uh, verse uh, 21. I believe it's 21. <clears throat> Praise God. I believe it's 21, I want. Hallelujah. No, it's... Uh, Verse, did I miss verse 15? Now, get, get out, did I miss 15? Yeah, and he taught, he that talked to me had a golden reed to measure the city. Notice, he talked with me. Verse 16 now. And then in the middle of verse 16, he measured the city. Then verse 17, he measured the wall. You're talking about the angel now. Okay? Then in verse 21, I believe it's 21 or 1, or 20, yeah. Did I read 17? Okay, come down to 22, 1. And he, the angel, showed me a pure river of water of life. Now, how many see that this angel is showing John a lot of things here? In the city, the river, and so forth. Is that right? All right, come on down in 22, verse 8, uh, verse 6. 22, 6. And he said to me, these things are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants the things that must shortly be done. Now... Look in verse 8. John said, I, And I, John, saw these things and heard them. He saw and heard them in the Spirit, right? The angel showing him. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel that showed me these things. Evidently, John must have thought it was Jesus. Then he said to me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant. How many see that? Fellow servant and of thy Brothers, our brethren, the prophets. So what was that angel? A prophet. How many see that? Now, if one of the seven was a prophet, I believe all seven were, were redeemed uh, men. Okay? Praise God. And so, in verse 10, he said, He said to me, the same angel, he said to me certain things. And then we come on down to verse 16. Now, listen to what Jesus said. I, Jesus... This book has Jesus' special endorsement. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel, my prophet, to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root, the offspring of David, the bright, come on, and morning star. Hallelujah. And how many know that he's going to give the overcomer the bright and morning star? Is that right? Now go back to Revelation 1.1. 1, 1. Revelation 1.1, 1, 1, all the way back. It's also mentioned in chapter 19, but one, uh, Revelation 1.1. 1, 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. Praise God. My, my, my Bible said the revelation of St. John the Divine. Well, number one, it was, I mean, oh, this was a revelation of Jesus. It was given to John, and John wasn't divine. Jesus is divine. The revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave to him to show unto his servants things that must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified by what? His angel unto his servant, John. Praise God. So this revelation came from the Father to Jesus, from Jesus to the angel, from the angel to John, and from John to the church. How many thank God we're part of the church tonight? Hallelujah. Amen? 
Praise the Lord. Isn't that wonderful? Praise the Lord. Now, how many angels were there? Have we saw? Look down to 120, Revelation 120. And the midst of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks, the seven stars, are the seven angels of the seven churches. Praise God. I mean, again, seven is spiritual perfection. I believe God has had the overcomer message in every age, don't you? And we're coming to the end of the age. Hallelujah. The fullness of that. Amen? And I want to know more about it. How about you? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, uh, let's go to Revelation 12. How many believe that Jesus is and was and will always be the true seed of God? Now, in the Old Testament, the seed was always coming. Amen? The seed of God, the true seed. You see it right there in Genesis 3.15. How many know that Jesus crushed the serpent's head? Come on. And he said the serpent would bruise uh, her heel. Isn't that right? That heel. And so, uh, in the Old Testament, the seed was always coming. In the gospel, the seed dies. And in the book of Acts, the seed is living. In the epistles, the seed is speaking. And in Revelation, the seed is reigning. Hallelujah. And I wrote this down. The religious order of Jesus, they loved Jesus so long as he was a prophecy. But when the seed came and exposed their way of death, he stepped out of the book in shoe leather as a manifestation of his life. The same teachers hated and crucified him. Is that true? How many believe today there's a lot of people who don't want Jesus to come? They may talk about it, but their heart is really not in it. Come on, amen? How many is going to be a shock and a surprise when Jesus does come? Do you know in his first coming there was just about eight or nine or ten people that really knew about it? Or groups, I would say, and people. They're just a small remnant knew about his first coming. Yes. How many believe there's going to be a remnant prepared and ready yes. for his next return? Amen? Yes. Hallelujah. Now, in chapter 12, uh, did, I say, did I say go to chapter 12? In chapter 12, how many know you have the man child here? You have the married church, the bride, and you have the moon church, which is a message in itself. Now, God is planting the seed of life in the womb of the soul of the believer by the Holy Ghost. And how many know the Holy Ghost is doing it? Somebody say amen. amen. Who put the seed in Mary? Come on. Who overshadowed Mary? Who's overshadowing this bride? The Holy Ghost. It's not man. There appeared a great wonder or sign or actually a miracle in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, the moon under her feet, upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth and in pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. His tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to, to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child. He was to rule all nations with what? A rod of iron. Her child was caught up to God and to his throne. Praise God. And so that seed has been deposited in this woman, this overshadowing. She's, been overshad she's being overshadowed by... <coughs> Her husband, the son of righteousness. How many, how many know Jesus is the son of righteousness tonight? She's pregnant with the man-child. Uh, she's no longer a church system, which represents soulishness. Amen. And then something's under her feet. What's under her feet here, brethren? What's under the feet of this woman? The moon. The moon under her feet suggests that the order, uh, it's the order of reflecting light. It's an imitator of the true. And it will pass away in this new relationship with the bride uh, and Jesus. Praise God. The woman, the church, will be in a position above that reflecting light. And she will be clothed with the S-U-N. How I many know Malachi says he rise, the son of righteousness or rises with healing in his wings? This woman in heaven or heavenly places speaks of that which was past, present, and future. How I many know there are those in the bride that was born way back there? Come on. Today... And tomorrow. Isn't that right? 
And how many know God's doing something today? It's not just all out in the future. Come on, it's happening now, isn't it? Amen. Yes, He worked yesterday. And He'll work tomorrow, but He's working today in our day. Do you believe that? I believe it. Praise God. And so she's clothed, this bride. She's crowned, and she's covered with righteousness. Hallelujah. The twelve stars in her crown speak of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. Apostolic authority in this bride, in this church at the end of the age. We have shut out the apostles. We shut out the prophets. But I'm telling you, God's bringing them forth. Amen? Whether we like it or not, God's going to bring forth His ministers. Can you say amen? And I thank God He's raising up many today. Hallelujah. Amen. So at the end of the age, the bride will have true apostolic authority in her. <clears throat> she is the queen. She's crowned. She is a beauty queen. Praise God. Her crown speaks of victory, of royalty, and authority. She is the bride of Christ, the church. Hallelujah. And God is putting His approval upon this bride. How many wants God's stamp of approval? Amen. I want His on my life. How about you? Come on. She's clothed with light. She's clothed with the sun. She is married to the King of Light. His name is Jesus. She is clothed with the Son of Righteousness. The sun, and the sun gives light to the moon in the natural. Isn't that right? And when you see the moonlight, you see, uh, you're seeing the sunlight second, uh, second hand. It's reflected light or artificial light. Amen? The sun reflects the light upon the earth. But this woman took the light of the sun, listen, this woman took the light of the sun away from the moon. No light on the moon. Where's the light shining? Look, at, look there in your Bible. Where's the light shining? A woman clothed with the sun. How many see that? The moon was in darkness. And somebody said we're going from moon ship to sun ship. <laughs> moon <giant. laughs> Amen. Let me, let me say it another way. There is a church. Now, this is what I'm going to say. There is a church <coughs> that's pregnant with the church, standing on the old church order. Let me say it again. There is a church pregnant. That's the bride. There's a church pregnant, the bride, pregnant with the church, the man-child, the overcomers, and standing, someone standing on the old church order, the moon church. How many want the moon church under your feet? <clears throat> the moon church is what some, many of us have come out of, <clears throat> the old order. Somebody say amen. amen. Now, the moon can represent good things in the Old Testament, <clears throat> but here I believe it's, it speaks of the old order. Praise God. But she was clothed with the sun. And her clothing speaks of the glory and the very light of God. She is the Lord's chaste virgin. How many know that that virgin is going to be a chaste virgin? Purity, a power, and perfection. God's going to purify her. How many of you have the purity in you? God's going to bring you into the power. With purity and power, He'll bring, come on, perfection and maturity in you. Isn't that right? That's what He wants in us. Can you say amen? Oh, yes. Praise God. <clears throat> And this bride, of course, or this woman, this bride of Christ, is coming forth with His light and with His glory at the end of the stage. So we see the light of the sun was moved from off the moon. It was totally on the woman. In fact, she was standing on the moon church, the old order, which shows us <coughs> she'd come out of that moon church. She had come out of death. Anybody come out of death besides me? Amen. There is a travail. Listen, there is a travail that we're going to see and be part of. This church has the Lord's approval and must come into persecution in a very short time. How many believe this church is going to be persecuted? Let me show it to you. Right, look at right there in your Bible, chapter 12. I mean, I know it's coming. Look at verse 13. And when the dragon saw he was cast into the earth, he persecuted, come on, the woman which brought forth the man-child. Now, you know, at first, he stands before the woman... But he doesn't want the woman. He wants the child. Yes. Now he wants the woman. He's going to come out after her. I mean, he hates all of God's people. But now he's coming after her, and he's going to persecute the bride, the, the woman church. And how many know there's a lot of persecution even now around the world? Yes. Amen. 
And yet our leaders have closed their eyes to that. And this woman is about to deliver another church, the man-child church. Now listen, listen to what I'm going to say. And I said it this way. Let me say it this way. The church always brings forth, always brings forth the church. And many times they don't like the one they're going to bring forth. That's history. <laughs> Do you know the people that from the outer court come to the holy place are persecuted from the holy place people? And did you know those who stay in the holy place are going to persecute those who are going on for God? If we're not careful? Come on, amen? That happens. That's history. And this woman, where's she dwelling at there, brethren? She's dwelling where? In heaven, it says. How many see that word, heaven? But how many know the dragon's also there? He's also in this heaven, isn't he? Look down to verse 3. There appeared another... Wonder in heaven. Now, he saw the wonder in verse 1, the woman, the bride. Now, I sing another wonder in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon. But where's that wonder at? It's in heaven. Same heaven as the woman. The woman was dwelling in heaven, but also at the same time there was a dragon, a great red dragon dwelling there too. I mean, how many believe that heaven's impure? Where you got a dragon, come on, you got impurity. Come on, isn't that right? Not where God the Father is. There is no dragon where God the Father is. Is there? No. This dragon speaks also. Now listen. This dragon also speaks as well as a religious system or organization. Amen? And how many, he's out to kill, to destroy the man shall church. So you have four churches here. You have the man shall church, the moon church, the bride church, and Satan's church. How many know that's the synagogue of Satan? You ever read that in chapter 2 of Revelation? Yes. Praise God. It also, this dragon also speaks of world powers and many other things that we could go into. Isn't that right? The religious systems also will get the government to persecute this church. Yes. And it's very soon. Amen? Now, when is all this taking place? Look, look, look down to verse 3 now. He talks about that dragon. But what happens in verse 4? All this is taking place. The man-child coming forth at the particular time. In verse 4, look at verse 4. His tail, the, the dragon's tail, the false prophet ministry, that's what the tail is. Drew the third part of the stars of heaven, cast into the earth. The dragon stood before the woman that was ready to be delivered to devour a child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child. At the, at, the, at the bringing forth of the overcomers, the sons of God, and the man-child, the stars... People who've lived in the heavenlies, the tail is bringing them down out of the spirit realm into the carnal realm, which is an apostasy. Have we seen men fall in our day? I mean, let me tell you something. How many know that's just beginning? And how many know we better be careful that we don't fall? That we have the grace and mercy of God and stay close to God that we don't fall? Can you say amen? I don't want to fall. Do you? No, no, no. I don't want to fall. Praise God. Amen. <clears throat> now, thank you, Jesus. Two-thirds fell, or many of them fell there. Now, how many know in the day of, of Moses and in the day of Jesus, they were killing baby boys to stop the real deliverer, Moses, and then, of course, our Lord? What's happening in our day, brethren? They're killing baby boys and girls. How many know in Christ there's not, neither male nor female in Christ Jesus. God's not looking at your sex if you're moving in the Holy Ghost. Come on. He's looking at your obedience. Isn't that right? They're, they're, we have our place, but you know what I'm saying. Praise God. So this man shall is going to be born. Now what happens when he's born? Look back again in verse 5. It says, And she, the woman, brought forth this man shall who was to rule or shepherd all the nations with a rod of iron. Her child was called up to God and to his throne. Now, this catching up is not a rapture, a physical rapture. This catching up is in the Spirit. <clears throat> Amen? Because, look, in, look at the next verse. Look at the next verse. How do you know it's in the Spirit? Because in verse 6, the woman fled where? Where'd she go? This is worldwide. Where she has a place prepared of God, and they, the word they are the ones in verse 5, the man child. And they did what? What did they do? They fed her three and a half years. Now, how many believe tribulations here on the earth? Darkness, as our sister said. 
Somebody's living above the darkness and going to penetrate that darkness. Come on. And minister to this woman. Going to nourish and feed her. Three and one half years. The tribulation is not seven years. Three and a half years. I mean, that's long enough. But we're in tribulation right now. Speed and I were talking tonight. We're in tribulation right now. But the worst part is coming. How many believe you're in tribulation tonight? <laughs> I believe we're in some of it, don't you? Amen. Now, somebody said, verse 5, well, that has to be Jesus. Well, yes, Jesus is in the people. Let me ask you a question. Was Jesus caught to the throne when he was first born? How long did it take? Thirty-three and a half years. Isn't that right? Yes. This man, child, as soon as it was birthed or born, was caught to the, up to the throne of God. Can you hear that? And it says in verse 5, this one's going to rule with a rod of iron. Now, we know Jesus will do that. It's mentioned in chapter 19 over Psalms 2. But look in Revelation 2. Let's see this in chapter 2 of Revelation. Verse 26. <clears throat> Thank you, Father. Revelation chapter 2, verse 26. And he that overcometh. How many know the word overcomer means to get to victory over something, to conquer, to prevail yes. over the world, the flesh, and the devil? Isn't that right? Is that true? Yes. How do we overcome the world? By faith, First John 5, right? How do we overcome, how do we overcome um, the flesh? The walking in the Holy Ghost, Galatians 5 says. How do we overcome the devil? Come on, by the blood of the Lamb, the word of our testimony. And love not our lives, our souls unto thee, death. Isn't that right? So he that overcometh keepeth my works to the end. To him will I give power over, not heaven, the nations. And he shall rule or shepherd them. That's exactly what it says in 12.5. He shall rule them with a rod of iron. Who's going to do that? The overcomer. Amen? Anybody want to be an overcomer tonight? And that rod of iron doesn't mean you're going to take it and beat them over the head. That's the rule in the Spirit, not the flesh. We'd like to beat some people into it, wouldn't we? It won't work. Then he says, As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, the nations, even as I received of my Father. So the pro promise given to Jesus also given to the overcomer. Well, he's the first overcomer, isn't he? And I will give him the morning star, and he that hath an ear, and so forth. Praise God. So God is raising up. This people. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Now, <clears throat> thank you, Jesus. This man child is going to be called up where? Where's he going to be called up to? To the throne. Now, God catches him up to the throne above the enemy, above war, above all kind of things. I mean, you know, I don't mean he's not going to be in warfare. But he's called up. Let's wait just a minute. Hallelujah. Stand, anyone having a problem, your left arm, right through here. I want you to stand to your feet. Praise God. Stand up. Okay, stand right up. Okay, we will hold that off. It's the left arm right now. The Lord's giving me a word of knowledge. Praise the Lord. He don't show me who it is, but it's, if you get, all right, somebody else. Praise God. Is you, sister? Anybody else? You got it, brother? Stand to your feet. You got it, Gary? That's all right. We'll get it. It's going right on down. Anybody else? Real quick. Praise the Lord. Let's reach your hands out and pray for these three right here. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for your virtue, your healing virtue going into their arms and healing. Oh, she's got a brace on her back there. Praise the Lord. Father, I thank you for healing all three of them right now. I curse that thing in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you for deliverance and healing by the name of Jesus. And everybody said amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. Let's give him praise. Amen. Give him glory. Give him honor. Praise him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, now, we have three choices. I hope not four. We don't be in the devil's church. You can, be in the, you can stand in the moon church, or you can be in the bride church, or you can move up into that man-child church. Anybody want to be in that one? Hallelujah. I believe God's going to have a people around it, don't you? Yeah. Amen. Now, I believe we want to be part of the bride and the man-child, brethren. How many believe that you've got to cry out for it? And when you cry out, how many know He's going to send the fire in your life? Tribulation. 
And if you still want it, and you still go right through those trials and tests by faith and patience and love Jesus, you're going to make it. Somebody say amen. Amen, because we're going to be tested. Isn't that true? Praise God. And so this woman is going to be nourished for three and a half years, while the man-child is destroying the kingdom of Satan and ministering to the woman at the same time. The devil cast out filthy water. Look down to verse, what verse is that? Chapter 12. Let's look at it. <clears throat> you know, brethren, I never get tired studying and reading and, and teaching these things. I love this, these great truths. I mean, oh, we're, we're right there. Isn't that right? You have to be blind not to know this in this hour if you don't have a revelation of the Lord. In chapter 12, look in verse 14. And to the woman were given the... It means, here's what it means. It means the two wings of the great eagle. How many know the great eagle is the Lord? Exodus 19. He bore Israel on eagle's wings. And he's going he's gonna to also take this woman by those wings. Hallelujah. And do something. He's going to take her where? Where's he going to take her? He's going to fire into this wilderness. I mean, you couldn't get all the people in just one little spot. This thing's worldwide, isn't it? I mean, God knows exactly where people's to be. Is that right? And he said something. That she might fly into the wilderness, in verse 14, into her place. Well, earlier, if you'll notice up in verse 16, her place is prepared of God. So her place is God's place. Anybody want to go to God's place? Where she's nourished for time, times, half a time. Earlier it said 42 months. From the face of the serpent. So you have the tail of the dragon. Amen? You have the mouth of the dragon. You have the face of the dragon. And so in verse 15 it says, And the serpent, the serpent, that's the one Eve met. Is that right? <laughs> the one that came at Eve. I want to test him. It wasn't an old black snake either. If you go back in the Hebrew, it was a brassy, copper, shining type uh, light. How I many know he comes in as an angel of light? And all that enchantment, all that prognostication, sorcery, witchcraft, and divination came at Eve's mind at that time. And I'm telling you, brethren, this serpent hates the church. The serpent cast out of his mouth. And so, what did he cast out? Water is a flood after the woman. The flood speaks of a flood, a false doctrine, a flood of filth. Anybody ever been in a natural flood? I was in it when a little boy. I saw all the dead animals and dirty things, and uh, boy, it was quite a mess. But how many know it's nothing compared to what Satan's throwing at the church? Now look back to Revelation, up to Revelation 16. Revelation 16, verse 13. Here's what comes out of Satan's mouth. And I saw three unclean spirits, like frogs, come out of the mouth of the dragon, mouth of the beast, and the mouth of the false prophet. Uncleanness. Uncleanness. How many see that, brother? Everybody see that? Praise God. So out of the mouth of the dragon is filthy water, flood waters, dirty water, filthiness, lies, false doctrine, uncleanness that's coming against the woman. And also, those, that flood water represents words. And I can take you in that in the Old Testament. It represents words coming after uh, the woman. Oh, there's a message in that. Praise God. But how many know what, God, what is God going to do here? Verse, uh, I read in verse 13. Fourteen. For they are the... I mean, back to chapter 12 now. Back, uh, chapter 12. I'm going to go back there. Look in verse... Uh, in verse 15 again, it says, And the dragon was wroth... I mean, oh, that means he's mad. <laughs> he's, he's wroth with the woman. He's mad at her. She brought forth the man-child, the overcomers. But notice something. But notice something. He don't stop there. He goes now to make war with the remnant of her seed. Well, what was her seed that she brought forth? The man-child. Now he's coming back after the man-child. Now watch this. Which keep the commandments of God, the things of God, the Word of God. I'll tell you who will keep them, be the overcomers. 
and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Amen. Anybody want his testimony tonight? Anybody have his testimony, I should say? How many of the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy? Amen? Now, I want you to look at that verse again. Here the dragon comes after the man-child, who, who keep the commandments, who have the testimony. Now, let me give you two scriptures. I'll give you many, but I'm going to give you two. Go to Revelation 22. And then I'm coming back to Revelation 11. Chapter 22, verse 14. And, Speed, would you read verse 14 there of Speed in chapter 22? My Bible's all chewed up. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> in, fact, I'm sorry. in fact, I've got it right here, but it's all chewed up. <laughs> chapter... <laughs> That's all right. Chapter 22. 22, 14, Speed. Yeah, 22, 22, 14. Blessed are they that do His commandments. Oh, let's stop right there this minute, Speed. Blessed are those that do what now? That do His commandments. Okay, go ahead. That they obey many have right to the tree of life. Okay, they have the right to the tree of life. What does the word right mean? Correct. Okay. Or access. Okay. And it also means authority yeah. or the privilege to the tree of life. Go ahead, speak. And may enter in through the gate into the city. Okay. Now mine says gates. Yeah. How many Eight. gates are there? Twelve, Twelve gates. Yeah, okay. Twelve is the number of? Divine Our government. Yeah. So these people are coming under God's divine government, right? Yeah. They have the right to the tree of life because they keep the commandments of God or they do the commandments of God. Now, Revelation 2 7, let's go back there to Revelation 2 7. Revelation 2 7, thank you, Speed. I can read this in the next verse and <laughs> it's chewed up too, but I can read 7. <laughs> Revelation 2 7, I got dog ears or something. My Bible. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. To him that overcometh, I'm going to give to eat of the what? Come on. What's he going to eat of? Who's going to eat the tree of life? All right. So the overcomers are those who keep his commandments, right? They're those that have the right to the tree of life, right? And they're the ones that live through all 12 gates, which is 12 experiences and light of the fullness of Christ. Anybody want that? Now, go to Revelation 12 again. I want to show you this again. Praise Jesus. 12, 17. I didn't get this teaching in Bible college, by the way. <laughs> it came from the Holy Ghost through many years of praying and studying and learning from others, too. 12, 17. And the dragon was wroth again with the woman. Went to make war. War. Everybody say war. War. War with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Now turn to Revelation 11. Hallelujah. Look in verse 3. I'm not going to go on this tonight. It takes too long. We'll be here another two hours. And I will give power to my two martyrs, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in. You go back and read your... Um, um, Chapter 3 and 4 of Nehemiah. You'll see what sackcloth is. How many of you speak to those who cry out to God? Is that right? Now, I want you to see something here. God said, I'm going to give what? Power to my two martyrs. Now, look up to Revelation 9 just a minute. I want to show you another scripture real quick. Look in verse 13. But we're coming back to Revelation 11. Revelation 9, verse 13. And the sixth angel sounded... I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour, a day and a month, a year, to slay what? Come on, help me now. So when the devil, uh, when, the, when, the, when, when God's power is let loose in his people, how many know he also allows the devil to come forth and do things? Is that right? And so God's given his, his people here power in chapter 11, verse 3. But yet at the same time, four angels are going to be let loose to slay mankind, okay? Now, chapter 11, Revelation. We stopped at verse 3, right? Verse 4, these are the two olive trees. This is mentioned in Zechariah 4. The two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. And if any man hurt them, fire proceeds out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. How I many know Elijah did that? If any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be what? 
kill. These have power to shut heaven. This is, um, I'm sorry, this, yeah, this, is, this, was, um, this was Elijah that did this. That it rained not in the days of their prophecy and have power over waters to turn them to blood. Who did that in the Old Testament? To smite the earth and all the, with all plagues and all plagues of will. Now, verse 7 is a fulfillment of 1217 of Revelation. What do we see in 1217? The dragon comes after the remnant of her seed, right? He makes war. Now look in chapter 11, 7. And when they shall have done what? What are they going to finish, though? Their testimony. Keep the commandments and have a testimony, right? The beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit shall make... What's the next word? War. What do you see in 12... What do you see in 12, 17? War. war. They shall make war against them and shall... Overcome and kill them. How many know that's not the end of the story, though? <laughs> I said that's not the end of the story. Because if you read on down, they're going to rise in resurrection power. And I have a book back there I'll call The Inward and Outward Resurrection. The, the overcomers will start the resurrection. How many believe there's an order to the resurrection? First Corinthians 15. Every man in his own order. That's a military rank or number. It, um, it's, it, so we're all in different ranks and groups and so forth. But God knows where we are. Amen? Okay. Anybody got a question on anything I've covered? It's been short tonight. Anything I've covered tonight? Anybody got a question? Speed's here. He's got all the answers. He can tell you quick. <laughs> you had enough last night? <laughs> Praise God. No question. Okay, brother. Have you compiled any I in books, some in books back there. I have a one a teaching back there on the manchild on the table and one on the reservoir. Well, so, some of this, yes, yes. I have this is my book on the the man child. I'd like to put out a, a large one someday. Okay? But uh, we need we need a lot of material on that. Yes, yes. Just just a minute, please. They'll let him get the microphone. I know that you can't really put a you can't like you can't really sort of interpret you this is a question. I know that you can't really say this is what's going to happen because you can't be dogmatic about this is how yeah. it's going to be and this is going to be. But is the tribulation that you say, like in your interpretation, is the word that it's going to be three and a half? Yes. Three and a half um, years. And if um, there have been, uh, what is it? Um, we're coming up to the year 2000. If there were, um, before BC, that was 4,000 years, right? And then there's, 2,000 years have gone by, which is six days. So you said we're going to go through three and a half um, years of tribulation. Like, right. that's sort of, I'm just calculating in numbers mm -hmm. in years. Mm -hmm. Then that, um, what's that? Well, here's the thing, sister. I don't know exactly when it's going to start. But it'll be three and a half years. The, the worst part, we're in tribulation now. But the worst part will be basically three and a half years. Okay. So, whenever that starts. Now, the sign of the tribulation will be this. I'm sorry. The sign of the tribulation will not be just, you know, all the bad things happening. To me, the sign of the tribulation will be God's overcomers being raised up at that time to face that tribulation. Plus, they'll be bringing tribulation on the world. Okay? The cows are wrong, too. That's right, Cheryl. So, God, the timing's in God's hands. I, I don't set very many dates. I don't like to do that. I mean, it's in God's time. I think it's dangerous. Unless we know that we know that we know. Somebody else. Praise God. Everybody understand what we said tonight, right? If you have a question, the guy next to you, he was, wants to ask the same thing, so. I'm sorry. Get down a level and tell us what your, the point of this message was for the evening. I mean, what well, the, the, you, the, the point you is, we've got to press into God if we want to be an overcomer. You know, we're, you know, two men are just, we're, we're too low. We've got to get up high in God. We've got to get with Jesus and let him take us up to another level. I heard you talk about the sins of the church and their people have fallen. Yes. And there's going to be more of that. Yes, it's going to be a lot and, more. And, you're going to have people, and, you're going to have an outpouring of the Holy Spirit, but you're going to have an apostasy as well. And there's a move of recon reconciliation across the land right now. Yeah, we, yeah to reconcile we, God's people. Not ultimate reconciliation, but a move of... Get, you know, repent of right, the sins. Right, of the, right, that's right, yeah, sure. As sure. A, you know, re, in, as a substitute, repent of the sins of the people that have, have fallen to try to get the well, mercy. Well, we need to pray for people. the mercy of God. That's right. We need to pray for them. 
And we need to pray we don't fall. Yes. I have a question on uh, verse 17 in Revelation 12. Okay. Um, about the part about the enemy being enraged with the woman mm -hmm. and went to make war with the rest of her offspring. Right. Um, right. That the spirit of rage seems to be already loosed. Yes. Against those that are sold out for the Lord. Right. Right. And it's not even in great tribulation, but it is tribulation. Otherwise, you said you said happening now and it's going to increase. Probably. Yeah. Is that what right. You're saying? And, yeah. In, in intensity. I, I agree. I agree. In fact, uh, how many know that? Revelation 11 talks about he's going to destroy those who destroy the earth. Well, why do they destroy the earth? Because they got anger and rage in them. Isn't that right? Somebody else. One other. Let's take one more. Yes, ma'am. Uh, verse, uh, verse 16 of chapter 12 uh, said the earth helped. Mm -hmm. I can't see. The earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, mm -hmm. which the dragon cast out of his mouth. Mm -hmm. You said the earth was the carnal man. Carnal realm. Realm. Yeah, those who live in the carnal realm, the earth, earth realm. Um, flesh, who are, who flesh are realm. they that's going to help? Huh? Who, who are going to help? I'm, I'm lost there. I don't know who's well, helping. I, I'm who's... Say, well, it's people living out there in the world. They're going to, they're going to, otherwise, those that, that live in the carnal realm, earth realm, flesh realm, they're going to receive all those lies and things Satan's going to cast out. And God's going to protect this woman from, you know, whatever comes. False doctrine, error, and all those things. Okay? It, it helped the woman. Right? Yeah. But see, all right, all right, let's look at it again. The earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth. Now, this is not the natural earth. It can't be the natural earth. See, it has to be mankind. Okay, Bruce. Well, <laughs> sometimes folks that are not saved are nicer to us than those that are. And he's gone. Well, be the earth being mm -hmm. folks that just don't know the Lord, but... Amen. You know. But you know what, brethren? We need discernment in the church. And there's a lot of people don't have it. And if you don't think we're under persecution, try to talk with mainline Christians That's right. about not being a rapture. That's right. That's right. Deliverance, rapture, all these things. That's right. There is a scripture. I've been sitting here trying to find it. Yes, ma'am. That the house shows itself to the house. Yeah, Ezekiel. And I, I, be, I couldn't think of it right yeah. then. But I think that the house... Is of course the church, the, the present sure. moving God of church, and sure. then there's those that are lackadaisical and really not interested in what we're saying right. or what we're doing. Right. But I do believe when they see the real church right. moving in the fullness of God, then right. I believe that earth church Amen. will help the woman. Amen. Amen. But this church, this man child, will have the fullness of God's power in it. Yes. The seven spirits of God, the fullness of Christ. One more. Okay, sister, go ahead. Um, when it says that the uh, woman will go into the wilderness for three and a half years, is yes. that a literal w wilderness? Well, it's worldwide, wherever it may be. Mm -hmm. For us, it may be five miles down the road or something, you know. But, uh, I mean, you know, it, it's just wherever God has you, you know. And uh, it's, it, it has to, it's a spiritual place, but it has to be where God puts you, places you, wherever that is. You might be in a bit larger city or maybe out in the country, you know. It just, yeah. just depends, you know, right? We just want to be in God's place, right? Okay. Who? Uh, Spencer. Uh, Tommy, uh, the uh, four angels that are released. You know. Uh, yeah. Right. We've all we've always said that the tribulation was be to, was to be brought on by God's people. Mm -hmm. But you're saying that the four angels that are being released are Satan's people. Those those four angels there is this bound. They're bound. I think they're bound angels. Are they bound or are they just being released? Is well, their ministry has, God being... has a timing to let them go, to let them loose. And so I see them as, as um, uh, satanic angels because they're going to lead that army to destruction. I mean, to, to war and, of course, going to, going, to, going to kill a lot of people. I see it as destruction. What I was saying is that God allows that his people also receiving power at the same time to do what, you know, we've got to do. Somebody else? Brother. The remnant of our seed that's caught away into the wilderness and uh, that place in the desert. What is that desert place? Oh, uh, the wilderness? Well, it's worldwide. That's all, yeah, I, you know, it's wherever God has us. It can't, we can't, it can't be one locale. It can't be that. Yeah, spiritual place. Go ahead, brother. Um, I realized that um, a, another interpretation was that the woman being 
Israel, uh, also the house. And the house to the house is the house of Moses to the house of Jesus in Hebrews. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, I understand that. Now, the interpretation also lends to a parallel of Israel bringing forth Messiah and the offspring being uh, the, the church, the house of Jesus. And the time of the woman in the wilderness being the Jews out of Jerusalem. Um, That's how do you see I, that? Well, I was in that teaching, brother, but I can tell you, this, this woman here is the bride of Christ. Why, why, did you, why did you depart from that idea so far? I'm having, there's a lot of spaces here. I, parts of this, I'm, I'm just not seeing how you're putting them together. Okay. This don't match. All right. Okay, if it was Israel, if it was Israel, look down to verse, for instance, look back down to um, verse 17 again. If Israel was, if, if natural Israel was connected here, okay, uh, first of all, look in verse 3. Where is the woman at? Oh, excuse me, verse 1. Where is the woman at? It's heavenly places, right? But the thing is, this woman here is the church. Mary brought forth Jesus, right? Yes. Jesus was not called to the throne. But this woman brings forth the overcomers, and they're called to the throne immediately. <laughs> then if you look down to verse 17, even though it's talking about the man-child, brethren, it says something here. Uh, they had what? They kept the commandments of God, and what else they have? Now, we know God's saving some of the Jewish people, or Hebrews people, isn't that right, today? But there's a lot of them not saved. A lot of them... Don't keep the commandments of God. They don't have testimony of Jesus. But the, but the people who know Jesus do. Okay? So there's, there's many ways you look at this. Okay, one more. Yes? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. God has a work for those in the Middle East, and He has a work for us, too. Isn't that right? Praise God. Okay, may the Lord bless you. Let's stand. Thank you, Lord. How many thank God for His bride tonight? <laughs> Amen. Let's give the Lord praise. Come on. We bless you, Lord, tonight. We thank you, Father, for the bride of Christ is bringing forth your overcomers, Lord. We bless you and thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we honor you tonight. We thank you that you're doing the work. Without you, Father, we're nothing. We can do nothing apart from the Holy Spirit. We trust in the Holy Spirit to bring us up higher, to show us greater truths, greater revelations, greater insights. And Father, I thank you for doing the work in everyone in this room. Hallelujah. Whether we're in the outer court or in the holy place, Lord, help us to move towards that holy of holies. Help us to come on up higher, Lord. Bring us up, we pray tonight. In Jesus' name. Brother Speed, I just feel the Lord's with you, my son. I feel the Lord has overshadowed you. Uh, the Lord has protect thee and keep thee in the way uh, that you go as you go out and as you come in. And God said there is a move. There is a change coming. And that the Lord is going to prepare that way and that uh, door for thee in the, in the future. And God says, fret not and fear not, for yea, I'll take care of all the details. You just move with me, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Sister Inez, uh, uh, the Lord just say, did say... Um, here that uh, I see the testing and the tribulation and trials and the buffeting. But God said, don't worry any longer. I'll take care of all of that. But I'm with thee as well. And I'll mark your feet and your feet will go in my direction. It'll go left, it'll go right, or any direction that I tell you. I'll, I'll steer you just like you would steer a car, God says. But, uh, but I'm taking the buffeting, I'm taking the, uh, the hardships and things away from thee that others don't see. But I see it and I'm going to remove it, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Well me. Another five minutes or so, Tommy. Uh, Twenty-seven years ago today, we uh, we were in Inez Burns' home, and I went out this afternoon to the airport and rented an airplane to fly all over this 
community to see if I could find. Now, we'd already flown all over southern Arkansas with Ken and uh, with uh, uh, with Gloria and Ken uh, Copeland uh, about six weeks ago. And we came in from Edenton, Georgia, uh, this morning. And uh, I pulled into a, over on Grand Avenue, I pulled into a station and I called Inez on the phone and said, we're back in town. And she said, where are you? And I said, well, I'm here. She said, well, get out here to the house as quick as you can. I want to tell you. So we went out there and she said, this week, now we've been looking for property for a long time. Inez had persuaded me in 19... 71, now this is 1972, uh, today, this, this Sunday, 1972, Inez had persuaded me in 1971 to start to come over to Hot Springs. We were in, in Jackson, Mississippi, and she assured me that God had some place over here when she heard that we were looking for, or I was looking for some property. And some place over here in beautiful Hot Springs, God had some property. Now that was in 71, and now we're up to to September of 72. And we've been looking for this property all over the country. It had to have clear running water. It had to have a, a mountainous area and be evergreen all year. And uh, I didn't know until I came here that Hot Springs was like that. Now, we went... To, uh, for many years, we were responsible for all the full gospel businessmen's book tables. Irma was that, and I, she, she's the great grandmother of all book tables, really. She, in reality, she really is. She had the first, very first book table there ever was in the full gospel convention, and it was just a card table, and she was appointed to it. She didn't ask for it. Just like I was appointed to record, I didn't ask for it. I was told, I was given a command, do it. And the same with her. She was given an order to, to handle the books of the full gospel. So anyway, uh, we were on our way to Sweden, to the full gospel convention in Sweden, back in, I don't know, 67, 68, I don't remember what year. And on the plane, we had, uh, of course, we had the whole plane book. And uh, some woman come walking up the aisle. I, it really didn't mean too much to me then. I had no idea today who it was. I'm walking up the aisle, uh, and she stopped at Irma and began to prophesy to her. Now, she didn't, she didn't think much of it. And she prophesied to Irma that the Lord was going to give us a place or show us a place that would become a garrison for, for the Lord. Now, a garrison is a place where ammunition and things are kept and people, and, and people go for rectu for, not recreation, but uh, re restoration, for restoration and, uh, and like that. And this was back before, just after I had, a little while after I had this vision, which Irma thought was ridiculous. And here this woman walks up on the plane on the way to Sweden out over the Atlantic Ocean at 35,000 feet and prophesies to her that the Lord's going to supply a place that will be a garrison. Then I, I told you about uh, uh, Ken Copeland telling me to be about three days after we had acquired this place that the place would become, uh, would be uh, the hub of the deliverance ministry in, in America. Uh, and to a fact that that is, has, that is a, a, a fact. Yes. But uh, then, before we were even looking here in Arkansas, and before I even knew there was such a place as Hot Springs, Derek, Prince, Derek and Lydia Prince were in our home uh, for uh, a series of meetings that we arranged for them in California. And one day out of the clear blue, Derek was just talking, or kind of this, and he said just, and he said, oh, you will, you will move to Arkansas one day. No explanation, no nothing. That was all he said. He just said, oh, you'll move to Arkansas one day. Well, of course, that made Irma very happy. But coming, but coming out of Derek Prince, which she respected very highly, uh, you know. Anyway, that brings me now back 
1972 today. And uh, I went out, to rented a plane out the airport, went for a ride again all over the area looking for some place that I might see that the Lord would brighten up, you know, and go look at. The only thing I found was a bush fire burning on a mountain out here by Mount Ida. And we called into the forestry department and reported it. That was all. Came back and while I was gone, now, we, I know his husband, sitting over in the corner by himself, paying no attention to all this congregation that's going on with Herman and Inez, he speaks up and says, I know where the property is that Glenn's looking for. Of course, I knew it. He said, all right. What do you know about it? He said, yeah. He said, well, if you know where it's at, why didn't you tell us before? He said, I just thought of it just now. And so when I get back from the airport, why well, the first thing they say, they say, well, they say, we know where the property is you're looking for. Let's go look at it. And so they loaded, we, or Irma and I know and Lee loaded up in the car, and they brought us out here. A wonderful, wonderful uh, Nazarene and Hilliard and his wife, who I think they both passed away now. I know Sterling has. Uh, but anyway, uh, lived here, and we got to have a wonderful card upstairs that they sent to us just before Sterling died, uh, 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 saying how much they appreciated the fact that they were able to sell us this property and what the Lord had done with it. Anyway, we came up, drove out here. And uh, it was Sunday afternoon, and uh, uh, Inez told, or Inez called Sterling first and asked if we could come out. And he said, yeah, you can come out. But he said, the property's really not for sale. And uh, said, well, we want to come out. So we come out, out and drove on the property. And when, it, when we did, so the house was really just all over me. You know? And uh, then we got in the truck, uh, uh, Sherilyn and uh, and Lee and me, we got in the truck and drove back in the back timbering around. And to me, it was just gorgeous. And it, it is gorgeous. I think it's gorgeous. Of course, we didn't, uh, at that time, we just drove across the bridge down, or across the lake. It was full. I've bridged it out over the years since then. And it was full, clear of the bridge. You could uh, just walk out there. And we just, we just drove right across the, the water, across the river. Uh, and uh, we drove around the back and came back. And uh, Inez uh, said, well, what do you want for it, Sterling? He said, well, I don't know. He said, I'll talk about it. So we went back to the, her house. And, uh, and I said, I think that's it. And, of course, there wasn't nothing here but Bryce. This, this brush in the White House and the White House, and a great big pond out here that wouldn't hold water, and brush. The goats couldn't get to it. And uh, uh, so then tomorrow, 27 years ago tomorrow, Inez began to negotiate with Sterling for this piece of property. And uh, he promised to give her a, a uh, price by 10 o'clock. Ten o'clock came and went, no Sterling. About eleven o'clock, he still hadn't called, and and I asked her, "What says? Well, I know how to do that." He said, "I'm going to write a contract, Jeff, and you write me a check for five thousand dollars." I said, "Well, I know. I don't know if I got if there's five thousand dollars to cover the check." He said, "That don't matter." She said, "That's seed money, and and the check will not be cashed. It'll just be a, a like a bond." Uh, and you just write me the check, and I'm going to write the contract. And she did. She sat down and wrote the contract, and I gave her the check. She called Sherlin back and said, I've written a contract, uh, and I've got, a, I've got a, what do you call it, the earnest money. She said, I've got a $5,000 earnest money check here, and I, and I want to know what you're going to do. And uh, she said, and, and uh, I've got a bona fide offer for so much money. So I've, we've got an offer here. Well... Uh, pretty soon, uh, he called back and he said, well, I can't accept that offer. I want so-and-so. And, -and, -so. and uh, uh, so uh, what we ended up doing, we split it in half. What he wanted and what Inez had offered, we split in half. And, uh, uh, and find the contract and 
Next morning, Tuesday morning, we looked, we hauled in the Winnebago and headed for Denver for the full gospel convention that was in Denver, Colorado that weekend. And, and then when we got there, that's when uh, Kenneth Copeland told me that he wanted to, had a word for me, and that's what he prophesied to me about this place. So, 27 years ago today, <laughs> 27 years ago tomorrow, we negotiated the contract, and 25 years ago, uh, this month, we had the first meeting here, up in the double Y, we had about 70 people, and Brother Williams was the minister. And then, in December, of this, uh, 25 years ago this December, Chuck Flynn came here and ministered for the first meeting uh, uh, here. In, uh, and uh, Chuck has prophesied, and many others have prophesied many, many times about this place and about what it was to be. And Chuck has prophesied several times about uh, what we should, that it should be a, a place of teaching. And so uh, three years ago, we started that teaching with the ministers, uh, with the ministers. And this will be our fourth minister's session for ministers to come and learn about uh, deliverance and, and so they can go back home and, uh, and improve and know different things uh, that we know here that, that they don't know. So we, we are blessed with understanding and knowledge here that so I don't, probably there might not be a, a half a dozen places in the nation, in the whole nation, or the whole world, that has the knowledge of deliverance that we have, and the kingdom, that is, that we have had and do have here at Lake Hamilton Bible Camp Ground. And we're blessed, we're blessed to have men like Tommy, who can, who's a teacher of teachers, with a prophetic ministry, prophetic ministry of ministries, and Jack Harris, and uh, and Jack hasn't been here. He was almost would have been here this time if he hadn't have had just a little setback the first of the week. Uh, but the Lord's bringing him up, improving him. We're blessed to have brother and sister coffee and 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 Doctor No and uh, and Speed uh, and the other ministries that that the Lord brings in here to minister. We're blessed to have them ministers who understand the kingdom and who flow with the deliverance ministry uh, that. To, to set the captives free. We haven't begun to come to the place that we need to be. There, that we need to be able to walk through here and say, in the name of Jesus, be thou healed, and the healing burn to the Lord, and bring instant deliverance and healing to the household of faith. Oh, I long for the heart of hurt, hurt within me to see the Spirit of the Lord move without pouring of his presence to, 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 and there's a kind of glory of the Holy Ghost to envelop us with his presence and his power and his spirit. Oh, I, I look, I see the day and I long for it, I long for it. And Jesus, he is Lord. This is the end of this message. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com There are hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Thank you.